Okay, so this will be the first impressions for Blue Protocol, which just launched today in Japan. And currently the servers are down because there's some maintenance, because there was problems, people logging in and stuff like that. So they're kind of having a huge maintenance. Uh, even the launchers are having a maintenance, I believe. So this is basically the substitute for not playing the game right now. And I want to keep playing, which is already a good sign. So let's go get into the score first which is obviously a first impression score, but I think I can narrow down pretty well already. I would say Blue Protocol will be between a 5 and a 7 out of 10. And that completely depends on how impactful the monetization is in Endgame. And also completely depends on if there is any Endgame, right? Like how much Endgame is there? How is the gameplay loop in the Endgame? Uh, so far, I think the baseline is pretty decent. I think it works better or it plays better than I thought. Initially, I thought it would play closer to Throne of Liberty, like a very static combat system with very little options. Reality is, though, you actually have some decent build options, like every weapon, or at least my Twin Striker weapon, had 12 different abilities that you can choose from, uh, four of which you can choose into your put into your hotbar, and then you have an ultimate ability, two imagine abilities, and uh, left and right click, which left click has a little bit of augmentation to it as well, depending on which direction you use. And uh, overall, I think that's pretty good. I think that's a pretty good baseline, although the UI looks very questionable from a Western perspective, I would say. Also, uh, my fucking camera looks like I'm on the moon right now, so let's lower that a little bit. That's a little bit better, right? I think it's overall a pretty good baseline. The combat feels similar to... The closest thing to it would probably be New World, actually, with more mobility and a little bit more fluidity as well so i would say like an advanced like an updated new world combat it's kind of the closest to that you can also lock onto your target uh, if you need to but that doesn't really feel super required as it would be in like uh, elden ring or dark souls or something right so it feels uh, it feels pretty dynamic it feels it doesn't definitely doesn't feel as good as lost ark or bdo or something like that but I think for a Japanese MMO, uh, this is way better than what I expected combat-wise. And I'm very curious how like it will feel later on, because abilities keep advancing and keep changing a little bit over you know the course of the leveling. I'm also curious what that uh, you know what that will do to the to the gameplay overall. Which is by the way a really good thing. I think MMOs should be more focused on having fun progression that changes your character. And right now I'm like level eight or something. That's also a big point actually that I will mention right now. Um, leveling is pretty slow and that's I think a good thing obviously I speak very little Japanese and I can read even less but um, it's it's uh, it takes a while to get everything done and the experience is not like do you know what you're used to nowadays with MMOs where everything is just like oh yeah you get like 50 million experience from the main story quest there's not really a main story quest there's some sorts of main story quests, but it doesn't feel mandatory you know you can just go out in the world you can explore, you can kill these mobs, you can do this 50 side quests. By the way, the best thing about Blue Protocol so far is fishing. Yeah, I caught like a, like a huge fish, what took forever. It, like in the beginning, I didn't even understand how it works. But the mechanics to it are pretty interesting, pretty fun to do. And probably the most fun I've had in fishing in an MMO. Which, you know, that's pretty good. Obviously, there's... I don't know how much there is to it later on. But just mechanically, baseline, I think uh, Blue Protocol Fishing is really fucking good. And I enjoyed it a lot. That was really fun. And that brings me to the second point as well, which is the life skills and stuff like that we've seen so far. That is probably... Especially the gathering part is very weak. Um, there's not only gathering quests where you need to go out and, like, collect stones or flowers or whatever. But the act of collecting them is very, very weak, which is basically just there's a light on the ground, right? There's a light on the ground and you go to the light and then you loot it. Which, uh, you know, it's not really that much different from just having like a flower there or an ore, but it does, it, it, it does kind of break the immersion a little bit, I think. So that's one minus point for sure. And then we also have the monetization, which I don't quite understand too well yet, because obviously we're still pretty early on, and I'm sure most of those things um, will become very apparent once we get further into the game. But there is a bunch of stuff. There's also like gacha systems for skins. There is a battle pass that has 
power in it and potions and like gold or like whatever the currency is right i think the monetization might be a pretty big issue and one more thing i'm a little bit worried about is the itemization because the items are a little bit unconventional where you basically just have your weapon and your weapon kind of represents your entire class so if you swap a weapon you swap your class and then you can equip those imagines you can equip like these small little emblems you can socket things into the socket slots on your weapon like all of those things could be could become a little bit shallow i think but again i think for that especially we need to wait a little bit longer and see where this is going because again we didn't even see i didn't even see all the abilities yet i don't even have an ultimate ability yet so we will have to s wait and see a little bit longer and I'll, i'm i'm hoping to do a full review in like a week or something when we've seen more of the game the way the game is set up with no pvp so no pvp replayability and like relatively you know simple mechanics so far at least i don't know how much replayability replayability there is in endgame and i also don't know how much the monetization will ruin a lot of the systems in the game right which that's most of the time what's happening but so far again i think it's probably going to be anywhere between 5 out of 10 to like a 7 out of 10 depending on what you like and also depending on what the end game looks like and also one more thing that i forgot to mention i think the progression of the game because it's kind of slow i've been playing for four hours and i'm like level eight it feels almost like a Mm, like an like an older mmo like an old school rpg where everything takes more time the quests give less experience and actually one more thing and one of the biggest gripes that i didn't even mention yet is there, why is there loading screens everywhere that's probably the biggest downside so far from the experience is every zone is like segmented and at each segment of a zone it has like a loading screen in between them which obviously ties into the thing that the entire game is ma makes you feel that there's not that many people in the world. The moment you go into a town, it becomes very laggy because then there's no more like shards, you know, that separate the players. In the open world, there's like maybe in the in each map, there's maybe like five, six, seven other players with you. Well, that that, that alone is that definitely ruins a lot of the immersion. I think is is all of these loading screens. If there was a better seamless open world. I'm pretty sure Diablo 4 does sharding basically seamlessly without loading in, which, you know, you know, this weird stutters it does sometimes, which, by the way, is also not good. But I think having, like, basically lines drawn throughout the map and then loading from, like, one place to the next place, although it's basically the same zone and you can literally see, like, where you're teleporting to, it's kind of, like, really weird. I, that's probably the biggest downside so far. But yeah. Okay, that's it for me for today. I hope I will have a proper review out in a week or something. But so far, again, uh, just to reiterate, no PvP, okay combat, great fishing, okay progression systems. We'll have to see more how that actually works out. Monetization looks problematic and the open world is pretty but very fragmented and a lot of loading screens, which makes it a little bit worse as well. But I think overall it could range from anywhere between like a 5 out of 10 to like a 7 out of 10-ish. Obviously, if the monetization is so terrible that the endgame loop is completely compromised, it could obviously go lower than that even. Um, but uh, the baseline is pretty fun, I think. And for, an, for a new MMO, like always, you know, new MMOs are fun to try out for a little bit. I think it's doing a pretty decent job. And again, like, I think the biggest thing here is it's better than I thought it was, so far at least. So yeah, take with that, but take that how you will. See you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. And also, if you want to watch uh, me play it live, which we will keep on doing tomorrow, um, go over to Twitch. Have a good one, guys. Peace.